गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स होप यू पीपल आर सेफ एट योर होम एंड यू आर कंटिन्यूइंग योर स्टडीज सो इन टूडेज टॉपिक वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू फ्रॉम द सेम चैप्टर दैट इज रिप्रोडक्शन इन फ्लावरिंग प्लांट्स एंड टूडेज टॉपिक विल बी फॉर्मेशन ऑफ सीड्स एंड फ्रूट्स सो लेट एस सी वॉट इट इज कंटेनिंग सी चिल्ड्रेन यू मे सी ओवर हेयर दैट इन दिस डाइग्राम यू मे बी ऑब्जर्विंग द फीमेल रिप्रोडक्टिव पार्ट ऑफ द फ्लावर in this this portion you can see this is stigma and this portion you can see is style and here you can see children ovary and within the ovary within the ovary you can see this portion is ovule and children whatever this you are observing over here you can see here you can see here that this portion you can see here sorry children you can see here this portion this portion which is called as which is called as stigma over here on the stigma here the pollen grain that is pollen grain which is the male gamete which comes from the anthers sticks on the stigma then the pollen grain which is having two cells that is the pollen uh, tube cell and one is the main uh, male gamete cell here the poll uh, pollen tube cell will germinate and form a pollen tube which will enter through the stigma into the style and it will come into the ovule where from this pollen tube where from this pollen tube what we can say is whatever the male gametes are there they are going to enter they are going to enter into the ovule and they will fertilize the egg cell here children what you can see is here children what you can see is that after the fertilization after the fertilization the ovary will enlarge the ovary will enlarge and it will become a fruit okay it will become a fruit so thus we can see you can see here and now let us see over here the next point what what it is containing you can see that the fruit 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 is what the ripened ovary or the fertilized ovary is known as fruit you can see very well that the ripened ovary or the fertilized ovary is known as fruit okay children hope this point is clear to you then children whatever the wall of the ovary is there wall of the ovary you can see that wall of the ovary it will be uh, called as the pericarp pericarp of a fleshy fruit if the fruit is spongy fleshy the outer covering is called as pericarp and this is the same outer covering which was the outer covering of a ovary when the when the flower was there and the ovary was there the outer covering of the ovary was called as pericarp after the fertilization of the ovary now you can say that the pericarp has three layers or it is further divided into three layers the epicarp then the mesocarp and the endocarp okay next you can see here is whatever the pericarp is there it is the covering of the flower or oh, sorry it is the covering of the fruit that develops from ovary wall and it is the part of the fruit which is dry or fleshy so the pericarp can be dry or fleshy it is also having the protective or the covering providing to the nutrition to the seed whatever the covering of the seed is there whatever the covering of the seed is there or the covering of the fruit is there it provides nutrition to the seed you know that within the flower uh, within the fruit there is a seed which holds the embryo so this embryo is getting nutrition by the covering of the seed as well as the seed is surviving due to the covering around it which is called as pericarp now we can see here that the ripened ovules ripened ovules when the uh, when the ovules they ripe they are known as seeds now you can say that whatever the layers of the ovules are there means the covering of the ovules which are called as integuments they are forming the seed coat so you can say 
that the seed coat is formed by the integuments what are integuments these are the covering of the ovule now children outer integument form testa in the seed coat the outer covering is known as testa so this testa that is the outer integument is uh, forming testa and the inner integument is forming the tegumen okay hope you people are understanding so testa and tegumen testa is the testa is the outer layer and tegumen is the inner layer okay now the next is the third type of the third type of integument or aril is present in some of the cases so you can say that two integuments are present children you have seen that two integuments are there these two integuments are there one integument is forming one integument is forming testa one integument is forming testa and the inner integument is forming tegumen sometimes in the in the plants third type of integument that is in the ovule sometimes the third type of integument is also present which is also known as aril okay so whatever this aril is there whatever this aril is there it is present sometimes in the fruits like lychee ingadels asphodelus trianthema as well as what is the function of it the function of the aril or the third integument is also to form the covering of the seed to form the covering of the seed okay now in certain seeds like castor which is commonly known as ricinus communis which is type of a spongy outgrowth in certain seeds there are some spongy outgrowths which are present near the micropyle you know micropyle it is the uh, tiny pore through which the water or the moisture can enter okay water or moisture can enter or various other factors can enter during the uh, during the time of the fertilization when the ovule is there or this micropyle also converts into the uh, seed pore through which the moisture can enter to uh, make the seed germinate okay so whatever the seeds like castor they have a spongy outgrowth which is also called as caruncle it is called as caruncle it aids the absorbance of water during the germination so the micropyle which will form caruncle will help in absorbance of water during the germination of the seed so now children let us talk about funicle funicle you may be knowing this is the seed stalk seed stalk you know the stalk of the ovule is also called as funicle so the stalk of ovule will be also forming the stalk of the seed the stalk ultimately withers means it will age it will become old it will wither and leaves a minute scar called as helum so you may have seen a minute scar is there suppose you take the ground nut so on the ground nut you may have seen that there is a minute minute scar that is called as helum okay that is called as helum so i hope you people are understanding now let us talk about the smallest seeds are found in orchids you know what are orchids these are the flowers which are present in the snowy regions or the cold regions and children what is the speciality of these flowers that they produce very very tiny seeds their seeds are very very tiny their seeds are very tiny and these seeds they have the weight about uh, 20.33 micrograms so this is so much less weight that these seeds can be carried by the wind and they can be dispersed by the wind very easily uh, okay next is next is the largest seeds are those of double coconut so you know the coconuts they themselves are the seeds okay so they are sometimes so much heavy that they may measure 6 kilograms so you can see that their weight can be 6 kilograms their weight can be very much 6 kilograms their weight can be and whatever the whatever the seeds are there they have a bilobed structure in the double coconut they have a bilobed structure and they are very very heavy so heavy seeds are present in the coconut okay hope you people are understanding very well now next is next is what we can say is 
that depending upon the presence or absence of endosperm endosperm you know that around the around the embryo around the embryo there is an endosperm there is a surrounding present called as endosperm which provides the nutrition to the embryo okay so the seeds can be based upon endosperm whether they can be non endospermic or endospermic so let us talk about non endospermic these are also called as ex albuminous seeds these seeds are storing food and which is completely used by the embryo so when there is a seed and whatever the embryo is there when it wants to germinate it will utilize this outer portion that is endosperm whatever the nutrient is present in this endosperm portion it will be utilized by this it will be utilized by this what you can say it will be utilized by this developing embryo okay hope you people are understanding okay now the next topic is endospermic or albuminous seeds what are endospermic or albuminous seeds what are endospermic or albuminous seeds see these seeds they are not used up completely when the embryo is developing these seeds are not used up completely means they are using the partial amount of nutrients seeds require energy okay seeds require energy sorry embryo requires energy for their growth and development so whenever the embryo is requiring energy they are utilizing the nutrients present in the endosperms they are utilizing the uh, nutrients present in the endosperms so by the development by the development or due to due to the development the nutrients they get used up which are being taken up by the embryo okay hope you people are understanding now in this case the cotyledons are thin so whatever the monocot plants are there they have actually endospermic or albuminous seeds in which the seed coat or the cotyledons are also very very thin okay now next you can see children this is the seed of a dicot plant this is a monocot seed you can see very well this is a dicot seed this is a dicot seed and this is a monocot seed so this is called as broad bean and this is called as maize so when you talk about the broad bean you can see this full portion is called as cotyledon and here you can see this full portion is called as cotyledon and here this portion is plumule here this is plumule you know plumule will become plumule will become shoot okay and this is the radical this portion is radical over here in the dicot seed and this portion is the radical over here in the monocot seed so radical will become root radical will become root hope you people are understanding okay then the next topic is importance of the seed so you can see that seeds have evolutionary achievement seeds help any plant to undergo evolution why because whenever the plant needs to grow whenever the plant needs to grow it will develop from embryo it will develop from embryo and the embryo will get the protection by the help of seeds okay so seeds you can say they are protecting any embryo so like this any of the embryo can get uh, protection by the help of seed and whenever it will get the favorable situations whenever it will get the favorable situations it will germinate and it will evolve okay so now next you can see is seeds have sufficient food reserve that nourishes the germinating embryo we talked about previously also that embryo for the growth and development requires the food and from the seeds it is getting the food by which it can get the required amount of energy now seeds can colonize and populate new areas by spreading and propagating you know propagation of the seed is called as dispersal when the seed is carried from one place to the other place it is called as dispersal either it can be carried by the wind it can be carried by some animal even some sometimes the seeds are also carried by the water you have seen and you have studied previously 
होप यू मे रिकॉल दैट कॉन्सेप्ट नाउ बींग प्रोडक्ट ऑफ सेक्शुअल रिपोर्डक्शन सीड्स हैव नंबर ऑफ वेरिएशन सीड्स हैव नंबर ऑफ वेरिएशन सीड्स हैव वेरिएशन बिकॉज ड्यूरिंग द टाइम ऑफ द सेक्शुअल रिपोर्डक्शन द मेल एंड फीमेल गैमिट्स दे फ्यूज टूगेदर मेल ब्रिंग इट्स ओन डी एन ए एंड फीमेल्स ब्रिंग इट्स ओन डी एन ए ड्यूरिंग द टाइम ऑफ द फर्टिलाइजेशन सो दस अ वेरिएशन इज प्रोड्यूस्ड इन अ न्यू प्लांट अ न्यू प्लांट डज नॉट सेम टू बी टोटली डिफरेंट इट विल बी एग्जैक्टली सिमिलर टू इट्स पेरेंट्स बट सम ऑफ द वेरिएशन विल बी देर सम ऑफ द डिफरेंसेज विल अकर विच विल हेल्प इन सर्वाइवल in the changed environment which will help its survival in the changed environment you can see very well it will help in its survival and it will increase the variation will increase in survival and you know accumulated variations accumulated variations are also called as leading to evolution now germination and sowing of seeds when the humans they purposefully make the seeds germinate and they sow the seeds it is known as agriculture so what is agriculture when the humans they sow the seeds they grow the seeds for the food for the food or for the nutrition then it is known as it is known as agriculture okay hope you people are understanding okay now thank you children and best of luck for your studies and be safe at your homes and i hope you will continue studying meanwhile thank you